so in the lecture i told you about the concept the intraperitoneal organs and retroperitoneal organs retroperitoneal organs are further divided into primarily retroperitoneal and secondarily retroperitoneal so what are intraperitoneal organs the organs which are entirely covered with peritoneum for example this liver is covered with peritoneum similarly this transverse colon is covered with peritoneum these loops of small intestine they are covered with peritoneum and there is this this layer of the perito uh, mesentery and then this layer of the mesentery and through this double layered fold of mesentery this is connected to the posterior abdominal wall so a double layered fold of mesentery covering the organ and then again going back onto the posterior abdominal wall holding the viscera so these type of organs are known as that are uh, intraperitoneal organs and there are certain primarily uh, intra retroperitoneal organs for example kidneys are were always behind the uh, this peritoneum but some structures for example this ascending colon and this descending colon okay they were initially intraperitoneal but later on by the process of zygosis which i explained you in the lecture these organs will become secondarily retroperitoneal also it also includes the second part and third part of duodenum initially it was intraperitoneal but during the course of development it became secondarily retroperitoneal so if, you, if i see the suppose this is this is descending colon if i trace the descending colon i can clearly see that my fingers are going till here okay so this parietal peritoneum is continuous over the posterior abdominal wall it is covering the descending colon from side from front and from here and then it is again reflecting on the posterior abdominal wall so it is covered from the peritoneum only from the anterior aspect rest part of it is lying behind the peritoneum so this is a secondarily retroperitoneal organ okay so this is the concept of intraperitoneal and retroperitoneal organs then we will continue with the uh, derivatives of mesentery okay so we traced this layer of the parietal peritoneum which is reflecting onto the liver as superior layer of coronary ligament see you can see that this layer is continuous over the liver also along the inferior margin so from the inferior margin this layer is also covering the inferior surface of liver liver if i put my fingers between this colon this is transverse colon this is ascending colon and this is the hepatic flexion so if i put my fingers deep between the liver and the colon my fingers will go till here theek hai and the part till where my fingers are going is this pouch this is known as a pouch likewise we studied the right subphrenic left subphrenic spaces similarly there is a subhepatic space on right side as well as on the left side so the right subhepatic space which is present between the liver this is the liver this is the inferior surface of liver you know so this is the liver and between the kidney you won't be able to feel right now but i can tell you that this is the kidney and this is the transverse colon okay so my hand is between the right suprarenal gland superiorly if i put my hand here and i will see the boundaries of this uh, pouch so anteriorly the boundary is formed by the the surface of liver the inferior surface of liver and at this level the posterior is formed by the right suprarenal gland the right kidney upper part of the right kidney then part of duodenum second part of duodenum and then the transverse colon okay so this pouch which is formed between these organs the liver anteriorly and kidney suprarenal gland duodenum and transverse colon is the right subhepatic space also known as hepatorenal pouch or morrison's space see this body is in supine position if there is a collection in the peritoneal cavity so 
in the upper part of the abdomen or the supraconic compartment of the abdomen this is the most dependent part so if there is any fluid and the patient is lying in supine position all the fluid will move into this pouch okay so this is the most dependent part for collection of fluid in the upper part of abdomen and you can also see that this space is continuous laterally with the right subcranial space also so i was talking about fluid if there is gas because gas is lighter okay lighter in weight so the gas will try to move in a superior position because it is lighter in weight so whenever there is perforation of any luminal organ suppose small intestine or large intestine so the gas will escape and move towards a higher position means the gas will try to collect under this part means the right subphrenic space or the left subphrenic space so when we order for an x ray then you will see a black shadow between diaphragm diaphragm appears white okay and then there is liver underneath the diaphragm but when there is gas between diaphragm and liver it will appear black okay so by the appearance of air under the diaphragm in the subphrenic space you will make a diagnosis of acute intestinal perforation okay so this is how we make diagnosis and this is how the disposition of peritoneum helps us to make different diagnosis if there is air it will come between the diaphragm and the liver and if there is fluid it will come between the liver and these different abdominal viscera so this is the right subhepatic space if i lift the liver see i have lifted the liver this is the sharp inferior border of the liver i have lifted the liver and you can notice a fold between liver and lesser curvature of stomach okay so this fold of peritoneum which is also double layered fold of peritoneum which is reflecting from the liver on to the stomach is known as lesser omentum what is the name lesser omentum this lesser omentum reflects from the liver on to the lesser curvature also to the first part of duodenum see this the part which i am feeling this is the pylorus of the stomach the pylorus of stomach has thick muscle thick muscle so i can feel this area this is the area of pylorus this is the pyloric sphincter and this part this part is the first part of duodenum okay so this let lesser omentum reflects from the liver on to the lesser curvature and first part of duodenum okay so we can say uh, the name of this ligament can be this lesser omentum can be gas it has two parts basically gastrohepatic part which is extending between the liver and the lesser curvature of stomach and a gas and a hepatoduodenal part which is extending from the liver on to the first part of duodenum both are parts of lesser omentum but they have different name because they are connecting different organs to the liver okay so this is the free margin of lesser omentum okay this is the first part of duodenum now you will see that i am insinuating my finger behind the lesser omentum okay so my finger is going behind the lesser omentum and you can see my gloves okay so the, my finger is lying behind the lesser omentum this is known as epiploic foramen this is known as epiploic foramen or foramen of winslow or adipose to the lesser sac so this peritoneal cavity is divided into two sacs one the greater sac which is forming the most of the part of peritoneal cavity and a lesser sac which is lying behind the stomach and retroperitoneal organs so this is the epiploic foramen through epiploic foramen now i have entered into the lesser sac okay so these greater sac and lesser sac 
are continuous at the level of epiploid foramen. Okay.